Howdy folks, how do you print something that big on this little 3D printer? You can do it. It was done in pieces, but you can do it. And this is the Dice Tower, the Observatory Dice Tower. It's something to do with a Kickstarter program for a game that I believe is called Mythic Roll, something like that. Anyway, we'll get into all that. But I also have something to give away this week too, so hey, hang out in the garage and let's talk about all this craziness. Yeah. The observatory, man, this thing came out really cool. You put the dice in up here and they come out, well, they go down the stairs and they come out the bottom here and they're captured in this rock uh, area. I think the whole model is just absolutely was interesting enough looking. Normally I do tool related sort of things. This is more toy, I guess, and usually I don't really do toys, but when I saw this thing and of course it also had this filament come in from uh, King Rune, I, you know, I think this is the project. We've got to do this tower and just make it look absolutely wild. There was a mistake uh, with the King Rune that really was, it was okay, but we're going to look at it. I did not finish glue. I didn't glue this up. This is not glued together yet. So it will be, I guess after today's show, I'll put the glue on this though, so that the whole thing is one piece. Right now, it's just not. Uh, I can lift pieces like that off. Oops. <laughs> yeah. And there's where the little telescope goes in the top. Well, look at this thing. I mean, this is just so, this is just so cool looking. I, I just can't believe how nice this thing turned out. And let's see, yeah, it goes back that way. This was the other uh, issue that happened. Ta-da, yeah, that's called, this is not the printer's fault though, but it was a mistake. And it really made for a mess when it happened. And what it was was, I was printing in extremely cold conditions outside in the garage, which I know better, you know, you really shouldn't be doing that in weather like that. And sure enough, the uh, plastic froze up just enough to clog the nozzle. It stopped, it jammed, and then of course the printer kept going. When I walked back in about oh, a few hours later, the printer was up here someplace still trying to, you know, put the uh, PLA uh, down. And of course there was no model there anymore. So. Uh, I counted the stairs off of, where are we here, yep, counted the stairwell off of this, back up to this set of stairs, and then pulled it up on my slicer program and started the model and sliced it from here up. So when we created it, we made the second piece, which, like I say, it was a, it was a terrible mistake, but it wasn't the machine's fault, it was something that I was doing that you know, I should know better. But when I sliced it, let's see if I can get this back together now. I sliced it so perfect that, yeah, if you can get her to sit in the right spot, there we go, that's not bad. Uh, if you get her to sit just right, the the line almost, the cut line there where she sliced almost disappears, but still, I'm, I'm happy with the model. I am just, there we go, let's move that a little bit more. Uh, we get the glue, we get her all glued up, she'll look pretty good. Right now, it, whoops, there we go. Man, that thing is cool looking. And that, is, that has got to be, this is the uh, observatory tower and also for the dice, in which I had to go around the house and look, but I found some dice. So they go in the top here yep, and down the stairs and come rolling out. We just rolled a uh, six, not too bad, I guess. But I have to get this glued together before we can really uh, be playing dice with it. But I just wanted to you got it. I thought, you guys, man, you see this thing? You just can't believe the color. In fact, when I'm here live, this color, the shine and everything on this thing, it's just, it's just, it's a gorgeous 3D model that's just wow. So making the dice tower, I learned a lot of lessons, uh, it, you know, because there was a lot of, I guess there was a number of mistakes. Some of it was involved with this particular printer and also some of it was this particular model. I keep hearing a scratching sound. Um, just a second. Yeah, there's been some strange things going on around here since I printed the tower. Uh, it's supposed to be some fantasy world thing or something, and it seems like it's uh, the tower seems to be pulling us into it. But yeah, let's get uh, let's get on with the printer. <laughs> Cold temperatures. Bad idea. Uh, we were about 40, probably about 43 degrees or something in the garage, which I should have known better, but I went ahead and ran this off in the garage and it was like, 
yeah, we had the printer jam. But also I am noticing I am having some problems with the uh, nozzle here on this particular printer. So that's kind of a concern because this is a new model and I was like, whoa. So yeah, uh, there's a problem with the jam. And when you go to remove the filament, it doesn't seem to want to come back because it seems to like mushroom. And I've seen this before in some old uh, extruders from way back. Oh man, a good five years ago or something. So this is not really a new problem. It's something that keeps seeming, it comes back, you know. So to get around that problem, the Bowden tube is, if you want to call it a Bowden tube, it's more like just a guiding tube. You can back it off a little bit, cut your 3D uh, filament up here someplace. Just just cut it back somewhere where you can pull it, pull it through. Take the nozzle out, heat the machine up to about 210 degrees. And if you can get a pair of pliers or something, you can get a hold of it. You can usually just sort of pull it through and push the rest of it out of there. That way you can change filament. Yeah, a little nasty. But I've wrestled with it and I've sent a message back to King Rune about it. So I haven't heard anything from them yet. And I'm still wondering, but it's like, okay. But uh, that's all part of the uh, nozzle clogging up problem that occurred with this. Now this comes, this is printed in the four biggest pieces that are offered, but it's also offered in small pieces. So you could print like half the base, half the castle, <clears throat> sort of like what I did, <laughs> and the smaller pieces and stuff. So it's broken down, so it don't, you don't have to have a big printer or something to make this. Just because of the base, not quite fitting here. I went ahead and printed it on the large machine I have, which is the uh, longer LK5 Pro. Yeah, which is a big machine and it can easily handle this base. In fact, it could have printed this whole thing in one shot, one go or something, but that wasn't the idea. The idea was really to, uh, let's run the room and just see if we run into some issues. And unfortunately, we have been running into a little bit of issue with the nozzle thing. Now, speed, okay. Uh, there's two things about speed. Right now, there's a new one out, uh, the Bamboo P1P. It can do a benching in about 17 minutes. The, any of the printers I have here, it takes over an hour, easily. Closer towards two hours in some cases than one of my old printers. And yeah, so that's, you know, that's pretty cool. But there's also been some comparisons with uh, filament printers versus uh, resin printer. A resin printer, a lot of chemicals involved. It's kind of nasty. I don't care for it much, but resin printer, yeah, you're not going to do that. <laughs> you're just not. <laughs> so not to put uh, resin printers down because they make really clean models. They're really, they are really strong. There's a lot of good things about a resin printer, but uh, there's also been some competition and people, you know, pushing either way. And really, I like both. So, you know, they both have their good and their, their bad. Anyways, uh, I've got the castle sitting over on the bench with the glue setting up on it. I'm just using some Gorilla Glue. I really can't say I have a glue for PLA like this that I can recommend. I have tried Loctite and various different uh, glues and I really haven't found something that's like, oh, this is the perfect glue for PLA stuff, projects like this sort of thing. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is. If, I, if it ever comes around to that, you'll be the first to hear it from me on here. <laughs> yeah. Now, the other thing was, uh, but with this, would be, it would have been nice to have something to watch the model being built so we could sort of like, you know, keep an eye on it. But, you know, I have to leave the house sometimes. I might be gone for a couple of hours, which is what happened. And there is a way to do that. It's called the Beagle camera that I have right here. I've showed you the camera before. It's not just a time-lapse camera, but it also can be set up through your phone so you can on on the move, you can be at a restaurant or something, pull up the camera and take a look and see how the 3D printer is doing at home. And if there is a problem, you can stop it, shut it down, whatever, you know. No matter how that goes, the bottom line is even if it screwed up and I was not here like it did, <laughs> you still can't fix it. Uh, you know, the best you could do would be to stop it, maybe catch it a little sooner. But let's face it, on a model like that, once that printer screws up even a little bit like and you have that gap it's like you're done you know uh, you have to come back and the good thing was the nozzle stayed clogged so i didn't end up with this big hairy mess here and you know, two hours later a big pile of pla wasted laying on a you know looks like a rat's nest or something kind of a mess so there was no mess involved it just stopped printing so sort of like good and bad and that could have been you know 
but if, if it had been the rat's nest thing, it could have been avoided with that. Yeah, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to give the camera away to, uh, if you don't have a 3D printer, um, I don't think the camera's going to do you much good right now, but if you're planning on getting one, or you do have one, the camera would be a nice accessory for somebody to have. So let's give it away, you know. Yeah, you know. So what happened? Well, next Thursday, not this Thursday, next Thursday, we'll give away the camera. <laughs> so if you have a 3D printer or you are planning on getting a 3D printer, you might want one of these. This is uh, hooks up through your cell phone and you can monitor your 3D printer. Also do time lapse, you can do all kinds of really cool shots with it. And we're gonna give it away. Now, uh, I guess we'll step over to one side, get over here someplace. And to get in on the draw for the camera, uh, you simply send an email to ctrewards at gmx.com, which I'll put, post it right there so you can see it. I'll also post uh, the link or whatever for the email address down below in the description. Uh, the, let's see, title or subject line for the uh, email should be, in this case, we're gonna say camera. So we'll put that like that. Just put that in your subject line. Then all we need is your name and your address and just, you know, one entry per household and somebody next Thursday will will draw and we'll send this camera out to a viewer because I like giving stuff away. <laughs> and this camera is really cool, so I think it might be really nice for somebody. And like I said, if you don't have a 3D printer but you're planning on getting one, this might be a nice accessory to have ready to go for when you do get a 3D printer. It will allow you to monitor your 3D printer while you're away from home or do time-lapse photography, do all kinds of real cool stuff with the 3D printer. So. Hey, you know, good thing. So later this week, we're gonna start having some uh, more hand tools, do-it-yourself stuff coming in, which is gonna be really cool. We are not doing lasers anymore. Uh, we'll get back to 3D printers. I do love 3D printing, it is a lot of fun. And there's something coming in here, huh? Well, it was just a dragon. Again, something fantasy about this crazy dice tower. The uh, glue is still setting, so I moved it over here, but yeah, I'm not gonna really touch it, yeah, for now, <laughs> until it's all set. <laughs> and then we can get some, uh, get the dice out and, you know, run them through. Meantime, uh, we've got some tools coming in, uh, like I was saying, and yeah, we've got a new sponsor on board that's gonna be supplying, hopefully, some really cool do-it-yourself tools for around the house, the garage, the car, whatever. Should be good. Got to thank everybody for watching Coffee and Tools. Thanks for tuning in this week. And uh, please like, share, subscribe. Ring the notice bell so you don't miss giveaways like we give stuff away. And we're going to be giving more cool stuff away. Yeah, coming up. Meantime, um, I have got to get away from this thing. This is too weird. Okay, I'm out of here. Over and out. Have a great day, everybody. Meantime, I'm going to go play uh, this game. Munchie. Yeah, it should be fine, right?